What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to this video. Today we're going to start to talk about Docker containers. Now why I'm starting this two videos series. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to this video. Today we're going to start to talk about the Docker containers. Now, often times when we do pen testing, we come across Docker containers, Docker environments, and sometimes when we establish a foothold on a machine, uh, we encounter or we end up in a Docker container or in a container. And sometimes we need to have some required knowledge to be able to um, enumerate the container, uh, understand what kind of images there are, and eventually escape the container and directly interact with the underlying OS. So to do that, or from that perspective, we need to understand containerization and Docker containers. So for this reason, I dedicated two videos. This will be the first part, and the second part will be uh, upcoming in the after a couple days so there will be two videos to be able to that they will cover the uh, intro about containers and how docker containers work so let's get started so the first thing is a basic intro into docker containers now basically guys docker containers use for virtualization so we use them to vir virtualize applications and operating systems so just like we, we do with virtual machines we can do the same with docker containers but faster and uh, with efficient use of resources that's in a nutshell it's a virtualization uh, technology but with less resources consumed and fast uh, processing at the same time applications can be portable and run on a device that's the basic idea of dockers now, containerization, to understand Docker's, first we have to understand container, containerization. Now, containerization is uh, is a process of packaging, right? It's a packaging of applications and the required dependencies. So, oftentimes, when we install an app or a package, we need to install the corresponding or companion dependencies or libraries. Sometimes the application won't run if your OS doesn't have these dependencies or these libraries. So that creates um, uh, bottlenecks, that creates um, sometimes the developer won't be able to troubleshoot uh, problems running the application. So to avoid all of that, we introduce the containerization or we use the containerization, which is a process of packaging the application and the required necessary resources such as libraries, packages, uh, dependencies. We package all of that into something called a container. So a container, so without the containerization, isation, we say container. So the container is, uh, is a container. It contains the application and its dependencies so that you can take the container, run it on any operating system. The operating system doesn't have to have all of these dependencies and the resources. If you have the container, if you have the image of the container, you can deploy the container anywhere else. And thus you can have the application running anywhere else. And here we come to the benefits of containerization. So the two biggest benefits of containerization are the security and the convenience. So containers run like in the, uh, separately from each other. So they are isolated. So and you have a container running a web server, another container running um, a DNS server, another container running another application. All of these containers, they run independently from each other. They are isolated. So this achieves security. So if, one container, so if the container running the web server is compromised, uh, the attacker will be um, imprisoned inside this container they won't be able to interact with other containers or the os they need to escape the containers we will talk about this in the security uh, chapter so that's the biggest benefit of the containerization other benefit which is also big it's the convenience so basically once you package an application 
into a container you can have the container as I said earlier running anywhere else anywhere else on any OS one single condition is that the OS supports some, something called the containerization engine or dockers so if you have an OS or Windows says it says you want to run um, a Ubuntu server on your Windows machine you can do that you can install you can have the container and the image of that you point to server and run, it on, and run it on your Windows machine but before doing that you will need to install the, the containerization engine or the docker engine you can do that by of course navigating we will, we will cover that in the uh, next video where we talk about docker installation and so on and so forth so once we install the docker engine on the OS we can start using any sort of containers all you have to do is to pull the image and follow the instructions to run any container we would like so they are portable and they can be run anywhere else as long as the operating system um, contains the or have the containerization engine installed or the dockers so that's an intro now what is the role of docker so we talked about, talked about containerization so containers they run applications and by the way we call the applications running inside the containers we call them images we call them images so now we talked about containerization the benefits of containerizations and what they are let's now talk about the word dockers so simply and merely dockers are platform they are a platform that facilitates the use of the containers so without dockers engine we cannot run containers so and at the same time dockers without containers there is no point of using them right so when we install docker engine on an operating system the purpose is to allow the use of the containers to associate containers with dockers so we can call them docker containers so they are a platform okay for the containers which is packaged with applications to be deployed managed and shared easily so basically let me show you an illustration of this so basically let me show you this one this is an example here in this room in try hack me so basically this structure here illustrates perfectly the concept of containerization as you can see we have the physical machine this is the, your laptop or the server or the computer now the physical machine is the lowest layer in the hierarchy now after the physical machine we have the physical machine OS it could be Windows Linux or Mac OS now as you can see so far so far we have the computer and the operating system such as like Windows and my laptop and then I after that comes the container engine happens to be docker when it's installed docker from here all the instructions can be found here so container engine or the docker container the docker runs on my main OS physical machines OS now that's it if I want to run container all I have to do is to as you can see the container here contains the application and the container OS or minimal let me run this one more time so here we have OS engine yeah so that's the the main structure here we have the container engine the docker and then we can run as many containers as we could so basically this is one container we can run another container here another container here and these containers can be shared or connected together through the container engine so what's the role of the docker here so we talked about the docker here what's the role of docker the role of docker here is to facilitate and enable you to run containers and let the containers interact with the operating system by sharing resources that's the role of the docker container at the same time docker container allows you to connect multiple dockers multiple containers together we said earlier that containers are by default separated and isolated from each other they cannot communicate but dockers allow us to make these containers communicate and facilitate the communication or networking between these containers and of course they facilitate the sharing of these containers so here we come to the definition of a docker engine so especially we say that a docker engine in this case it is the container engine here it's an API runs on the operating system so it allows you as we said earlier to connect more than one container with each other if we have more than one container and also that the container engine allows us to 
import and export containers or the images of course if you want to transfer files between the main OS and the container we can do that through the docker engine as you can see the docker is the main engine in this uh, uh, equation here so we need docker engine to be able to use containers efficiently share them and let them interact with the main OS now as we said earlier these containers can have everything can run anything applications OS's and as we said earlier they are better than virtual machines for the fact that they use less resources memory CPU you don't need to run a virtual machine a dedicated software to run a virtual machine and then install the OS and share resources with your host OS which may impact the performance of your main OS all you have to do is to <coughs> install the main docker engine and then you can go to uh, the main official docker website you can see containers many containers you can download the container you can download the image and deploy the container now here we come to the uh, concept of how we can now if we install the docker engine now what's the next step next step is to build the containers so basically we want to build the containers the containers are shared publicly you can access the containers publicly uh, you can actually find them in github or you can find them here uh, so basically all you have to do is to pull the image now the image the image of the container contains the instruction the instructions necessary needed to deploy that container so these images can be found online as I said earlier in the official website or shared publicly in github we can pull these images and once we deploy the images we deploy the container simply now the images can the images uses the uh, YAML programming language to perform and run the instructions to deploy the container so that you will have the application deployed or the OS and installed on the container now all of this introduction is very necessary guys if we want to talk about pen testing docker containers how docker containers are compromised um, what you need to do indications that you after you compromise uh, a target indications that you are inside a docker container all of that uh, to, 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 to be able to understand this we have to understand the idea of containerization and how dockers uh, work uh, so that was a basic intro guys I recommend you guys to go over this room intro to containerization if you want to understand more about how containerization works if you think that the explanation of this video is sufficient then you don't need to go over this room um, and if you are asking me about these notes these notes can be found once you are subscribed to the channel membership you will get access to uh, cyber security notes divided by blue team and red team and you will also get access to digital marketing manual data analyst notes at the same time you'll get access to system administration notes uh, like IT ones so all of them they are published publicly some of them are published in PDF as PDF uh, notes in Google Drive and the other the rest of the notes are published through an online portal this is an, this is a, a preview of the online portal as you can see here and the notes that don't have copyrights they are shared in this portal so that was it guys for this video in the next video we're going to talk extensively about the installation of these containers and how to deploy and pull images the, from the public so in the, after that we complete the uh, intro to containerization and docker containers and then you can proceed and start practicing your skills in pen testing docker containers so that was it guys for today i hope you liked the video and i will see you later